Any course with the word media in its title uh, really owes a big debt to Marshall McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan was uh, really the first person to study media with the same sort of academic rigor as one would devote to a topic such as literature, uh, which was McLuhan's background uh, in, in literature. He's a professor of, of literature. McLuhan was born in 1911, and he passed away in 1980. Um, I personally had heard of Marshall McLuhan uh, and perhaps his most famous quote, uh, the medium is the message, long before I really had any idea uh, of what, uh, what he meant. Um, really, uh, the quote, the medium of the message, um, is a way of saying that the that technological changes that we face change and reshape both individuals and society regardless of the content. And he would make the claim even to a greater degree than the content. In other words, McLuhan would argue that it really doesn't matter what people watch on TV. The most significant changes in our society and in individuals simply come from the act of watching TV. So the pervasiveness of TV, the fact that people are watching TV instead of engaging in other activities, that's where really the biggest change in individuals and societies would come from. All right. Um, he went back through history and examined many of the other uh, technological innovations of the time. For example, the creation of the printing press. Um, he said shifted our society from one that was based on hearing and, and audio, where the ear was the most important uh, sense, uh, to a visual uh, society where people would look at things instead of hearing a story being being told. People would read it in a book. All right. There's an MSNBC article, which I'll be posting a link to from 2008, that, that argues um, that um, the use of the Internet um, has really caused a shift in people's brains and how people approach problems. Let me read you a little bit from that article, and I will post a link to it um, online. The article begins, what does a teenage brain on Google look like? Do all these hours spent online rewire the circuitry? Could these kids even relate better to emoticons than real people? These sound like concerns from worried parents, but they're coming from brain scientists. All right, and the article goes on to discuss how the technology such as the internet may be altering how our brains work. And that really is straight out of McLuhan. Uh, McLuhan wrote about this topic years before the invention of the internet. What I'd like to do uh, now is read a, uh, a few passages from a book that's really a, the, the title of which is sort of a pun on his famous quote. Instead of the medium is a message, the medium is the massage. Marshall was really a, a loved wordplay and, and puns. But I'd like to read you uh, a few paragraphs from this book that was written in 1967. The medium or process of our time, electric technology, is reshaping and restructuring patterns of social inter interdependence in every aspect of our personal life. It is forcing us to reconsider and reevaluate practically every thought, every action, and every institution formerly taken for granted. Everything is changing. You, your family, your neighborhood, your education, your job, your government, your relation to the others and they're changing dramatically. Societies have always been shaped more by the nature of the media by which men communicate than by the content of the communication. The alphabet, for example, is a technology that is absorbed by the very young child in a completely unconscious manner, by osmosis, so to speak. Words and the meaning of words predispose a child to think and act automatically in certain ways. The alphabet and print technology fostered and encouraged a fragmenting process, a process of specialism and detachment. Electric technology fosters and encourages unification and involvement. It is impossible to understand social and cultural changes without the knowledge of the workings of the media. This was written in 1967, which was 17 years before Mark Zuckerberg, all right, the founder of Facebook, um, was born. And in fact, 37 years before Facebook, YouTube, and so on were were introduced, 30-some years anyhow, 37 years before Facebook, probably approximately the same length of time before YouTube. So he was very, uh, uh, very much a prophetic person. Um, he really um, had great insight uh, 
in studying the media and seeing that the impact that the media had. So I really think as we are studying social media, I think it's important to, first of all, acknowledge the sort of the, the intellectual debt that anyone studying the media owes to Marshall McLuhan. But in addition, look at some of his concepts because um, his concepts are, uh, again, uh, very important in terms of, uh, in terms of understanding the way um, any media works. At the time he was a um, he was working and he was studying as I, as I mentioned before, really the big new media that was being introduced was television. He has some very interesting comments, however, um, which I'll read from a book, which is let me show it here, a nice little biography of Marshall McLuhan. It might be difficult to see, titled Marshall McLuhan, You Know Nothing of My Work, and we'll, we'll come back to the title in, in a few minutes here. But McLuhan wrote in 1962, the next medium, whatever it is, it may be the extension of consciousness, will include television as its content, not its environment and will transform television into an art form. A computer as a research and communication instrument could enhance retrieval, obsolesce mass library organization, retrieve the individual's encyclopedic function, and flip it into a kind of private line uh, to speedily tailor, tailored data of a saleable kind. Um, that certainly, to me, sounds like as good a description as the internet uh, that one could possibly come up with in, in 1962. Um, McLuhan was not necessarily about making very specific predictions. When you read McLuhan's work, you really get uh, more of a, a, a sense of what the nature of technologies are than to, to read his work and get sort of specific predictions like by this time, you know, um, certain sort of technologies will be, will be employed. Um, <clears throat> a great quote from uh, the same book says, One certainly wishes people would give a fraction of the time they give to dimwits like Nostradamus who actually claim to see the future. Call it religion or call it optimism, but hope for Marshall lay in the fact that humans are social, social creatures first and that our ability to express intelligence and builds, build civilization stems from our inherent social needs as individuals. All right. Uh, Earlier in the paragraph, the statement goes, to scan Marshall's books for inklings of what will happen, say, next year, is a poetic or artistic experiment. You get a sense of the future rather than a prescription or a prediction. McLuhan was actually uh, misunderstood in his lifetime, uh, and he was also somewhat controversial. Uh, the title of the book that, that I mentioned before, You Know Nothing of My Work, actually comes from a scene in a Woody Allen movie, uh, Annie Hall. Uh, and I'll post a link to the video if, if that is available uh, on YouTube. And uh, a lot of people misunderstood uh, McLuhan as sort of being a cheerleader or a blanket supporter of any sort of new technology, and that was not the case. Uh, McLuhan really looked at, at new uh, advances and, and technologies and, and new mediums uh, uh, in a very objective way and with sensitivity, all right? Um, and he considered really all aspects of it, all right? He viewed technology really as an extension of the human body and, and the human mind. And in doing so, he sort of went beyond some people who um, only preach the, the benefits of technology to include um, other aspects of the technology that, that come out. And he even went beyond uh, a simplistic, these are the good things, these are the bad things, and he created a model for examining new technologies called McLuhan's Tetrad. Well, Tetrad comes from um, uh, the word for, means four ideas or four thoughts. And what he would argue is that any new technology enhances something uh, about people and enhances some ability of humans, makes obsolete some things, retrieves or recovers certain things. In other words, things that previously were ob obsolete are brought back. And finally, reverses at some point. In other words, when taken to the extreme, something different happens. For example, we might consider um, telephones. All right. 
Telephones enhance people's, people's speaking and people's hearing, so that was what they enhanced. What did telephones make obsolete? To a large degree, telephones made obsolete um, things like telegraphs or, or telegrams. All right, those became largely uh, obsolete with the introduction of the telephone. What did uh, the, the telephone retrieve? What did it, it bring back? Well, it bring back the ability to, for example, and this is just one thing, you could probably think of many things in each category, but the telephone brought back the ability to stay in close touch with your family. In the past, when everyone lived in very small areas, you know, you, you, you had sort of uh, an extended family and you could remain in touch with them. Um, later on, with the urbanization uh, of, of the country and as people started moving around, um, it, it remained more difficult to stay in contact with members of your family, but the telephone sort of helped bring that back. All right. Lastly, taken to the extreme, the reversal aspect of it. What happens when this technology has widespread use? Well, you have the introduction of things such as cell phones. It's not enough anymore to have a phone in your home. You want a phone that you can take with you all the time. Uh, and then you could argue that text messages sort of sprung from the use of this technology. All right, I don't necessarily want to call someone. I just want to give them a quick message. So I send a text uh, message. And that sort of grew out from there. Now McLuhan would argue that all these things are present when the technology is introduced, but may take many years um, for people to envision them. For example, I don't think anyone at the time of Alexander Graham Bell would have envisioned um, the, the use of cell phones and text messaging and, and so on. For all these reasons, especially uh, the perspective of the Tetrad, which really takes a look at a technology or a media, medium and, and analyzes it um, in a very well-rounded, comprehensive way, McLuhan provides us a great perspective to examine social media, perhaps on a bit of a cultural level. I, I think it's really under, uh, important to understand what its work here beyond the, the, the narrow things of, you know, gee, how can I use Facebook to increase sales and so on, but to sort of get a greater sense of the cultural impact of social media. So uh, in, in this unit, for this week's uh, unit, we will be, you know, using McLuhan's thought, especially McLuhan's tetrad, to analyze uh, some aspects of uh, Web 2.0 and new media things. Um, I'm really curious to see what uh, people's thoughts are uh, about this and viewing social media from this perspective. I will supply uh, some links uh, in addition to this that will give you maybe a little bit more background. I certainly don't claim to be an expert on McLuhan, but um, between this brief introduction and uh, the other material I provide, uh, my hope is that you'll be able to uh, understand his his writing and his thinking enough to be able to use his framework uh, of the tetrad to examine these technologies in more detail.